Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to Columbus City Council Chamber for the Veterans Committee public hearing. I am Councilmember Eileen Paley and I'm proud to serve as the chair of the Veterans Committee. Before I continue, I want to acknowledge the debt of gratitude we have for our veterans, one we can never repay. I also want to welcome my colleague, Councilmember Jiza Page, for joining us this evening. The purpose of this hearing is to continue to let everyone know what wonderful services we have available for our veterans. In my time as chair, I've learned of an incredible services available. I also have been contacted by many veterans who were unaware of some of these services. So tonight we have several speakers, and at the end of the presentations, we will open the public comment portion of the meeting, and speaker slips are available in the back of the room. And you can give them to my aide, Nancy Pryor Solly, or Marquise Lovejoy. But first, I am welcoming Mr. Rick Isbell, the Mayor's ADA and Veterans Coordinator, for some comments. Welcome, Mr. Isbell. Thank you very much, Council Member. Thank you very much. Uh, the Mayor's Office appreciates the outreach and the efforts being made by the Council. Uh, we know that your role as the Chair of this Committee is uh, something you don't take lightly, and, and that is much appreciated. And um, as a Veteran Affairs Coordinator, I am very much dedicated to helping you, Ms. Page, anyone who is willing to outreach to our veterans, to our community, and sending information, because that is the most important thing. And you see the importance in that, and I really appreciate you having this public, public meeting so that we can discuss it and get that information out. So thank you. We appreciate all you do for our veterans and for the city of Columbus. Thank you for being here, Mr. Isabel. My pleasure. Our next speaker that we have this evening is Mr. E.J. Thomas, who is with Habitat for Humanity. Mr. Thomas, would you tell us what you do and provide assistance for our veterans and where you are located? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, Councilmember Page. I, I'd like to just echo Mr. Isbell's comments and say thank you for giving us all the opportunity. Uh, I'm CEO of Habitat for Humanity Mid-Ohio, and uh, our role is to help eliminate substandard housing one home at a time. One of the reasons that we're here this evening is because we do have a veterans program, and it's uh, one that allows for a veteran to be able to reduce their first mortgage uh, for a Habitat home, which is at zero percent, by $1,000 for every year of service up to $10,000. And uh, so we think that's a nice give back to those who have given so much in service to this nation. Uh, we also have a repair program in which we're able to discount the amount of the repair uh, and then discount uh, further with a 0% loan the amount that they are obligated to pay. Uh, we've had some pretty good success with that with a half a dozen or so that we have uh, been able to put in homes or repair their homes. And uh, in many ways, the work that we do is kind of like that story about the starfish. Uh, you can't get them all, but for every one you're able to toss back in the ocean, it's, it's a big deal to that one. And we've, uh, it's been very satisfying to help some of these veterans with uh, repairs on their homes that they are either physically or financially unable to do on their own. And uh, so we'd like for folks to know about that and be able to access the, uh, the program. Could you tell our listeners how to contact your organization if they have questions or if they need help? Sure. 614 Habitat will get them right to our switchboard. So that's the easiest way to contact us. They can look us up online at uh, www.habitat.habitatmidohio.org. Thank you. I know that um, I have been collaborating with Mr. Thomas about the possibility of our expanding our home repair program, or at least coordinating with Habitat for Humanity. Um, not only do you help our veterans, but you help a lot of our citizens. And I want to thank you for all the hard work that Habitat does. Um, and thank you for being here this evening. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mr. John Warwicks of the Franklin County Veteran Services. When I met Mr. Warwicks and had a tour of their offices, I was so pleased to learn of all of the services they provide to our veterans. 
I'm a little bit overwhelmed by all the work that you do over there, Mr. Warwick's. The floor is yours. Councilmember Paley, <clears throat> Councilmember Page, thank you for having me here tonight. <clears throat> My name is John Warwick. I'm the Assistant Director of the Veterans Service Commission. I've been there for 17 years. <clears throat> the commission has been in existence since 1864, <clears throat> just after the Civil War. It first started out just uh, simply as a financial assistance program, and then <clears throat> as the VA was developed, morphed into uh, a program that assisted veterans in filing for claims. <clears throat> Uh, we just recently received our GDX report, which is kind of a report card on how much money we invest and how much money we get back into the community. For every dollar that we spend in running our agency, we receive $78 back to the county in the form of benefits for veterans. That's pretty phenomenal uh, in itself. Uh, we have two missions, primary missions. One is to assist the veterans and their family members in filing for claims. <clears throat> and that could be anywhere, anything from going to school to uh, filing for service-connected disabilities or any other benefit that the VA has to offer. Uh, we also assist with financial assistance. Uh, that's a $2.4 million program. Last year, we expended 99.9% .9 of the, the funds that were available to us and actually ended up going back to the county and asked for another $400-plus to operate uh, our holiday meal car program, which takes place in November and December. It's been an annual program for the past five years. Uh, the financial assistance program also offers assistance with rent, mortgage, utilities, uh, car repairs, dental, um, glasses, and then we also have other programs uh, that work with uh, other agencies. We have Meals on Wheels with Healthcare or, uh, Alliance, Healthcare Alliance. <clears throat> we also have uh, a safe housing program that is done through uh, senior options that can spend up to eight thousand nine hundred dollars to go into a, a veteran's home and make it uh, handicap accessible for them so that they can stay in their home uh, and be comfortable and safe in doing so. We also have a transportation program where we can offer bus tickets, gas cards, <coughs> uh, or a taxi service to veterans who need transportation to the VA. So we have a multitude of programs. We just recently located uh, from Vets Memorial. Uh, to the old Memorial Hall, which is kind of ironic because we've come full circle from Memorial Hall to Vets Memorial, back to Memorial Hall. Uh, we were very happy that uh, the county <clears throat> uh, built us a brand new facility within a facility. Uh, you've been there, you've seen that. Uh, council member, it's, it's absolutely uh, something to be proud of, not only to work in, but uh, for our veterans to come to. So we're, we're extremely proud of that. Uh, we just recently <clears throat> hired a new director. Uh, his name is uh, Director Tanzel. He is a 32-year uh, veteran uh, from the Army and National Guard, retired colonel, just retired this past January. So we were very, very happy uh, to have him on board. His leadership uh, has really uh, been a lot to us. Thank you. So do you have a phone number or a website that people can look at if they're interested in your services? Absolutely. Just type in there, Franklin County Veterans Service Commission, and uh, that site will pop up for you. It's a brand new site. It's very user friendly, has the links and everything that we just talked about, uh, all the forms that are corresponding to the programs that uh, the vets may uh, have questions about. And if the answer isn't there, they can always call 525 2500, and we'll, if we don't have the answer, we'll get the answer for them. That's what I found kind of interesting about your organization is that you kind of, I mean, I was trying to stump you on um, some programs that you might not be aware of. I think I got you on a couple, but um, they were very, very local. But it's um, very much a coordinating organization to try a clearinghouse of all kinds of services that might be available now or in the future kind of go through you. Well, what we attempt to do, <clears throat> just like sitting here for just a few moments ago, speaking to another one of the, of the speakers that you have coming up, uh, I've already got an alliance that uh, we can build with them and in sharing information. So the idea is to go out and talk to those folks and then have them reciprocate and come and tell us what they do. So that's how we build these, you know, uh, uh, these foundations of these individuals and, and we form bonds with them and then they can refer to us and we can refer to them. That's the goal of this hearing, Mr. Warwick, is to not only to provide the information to our 
viewing and listening um, people out there, but also to um, coordinate um, all of the services that are sitting in this room, because I know you all don't know each other. So um, thank you for your service to our veterans, and thank you for the information. Thank you for having me. Hold on. Council Member jo Page has a question for you. Thank you, Chair Paley. Um, just a quick question. Do we know how many veterans are in Franklin County? <clears throat> the number changes. I'm going to give you a number, but don't hold me to it, around 88,000, uh, because the numbers do change. I mean, right now we are losing our World War II veterans at a phenomenal rate. Uh, we would just review the budget before I came over. Uh, right now I am signing off on four to five funerals, indigent burials every week. That doesn't count the ones who are paying for it themselves. These are just the ones that are seeking help uh, from, from the commission with the burial fees. So uh, that number constantly changes. But we also have new veterans coming into the county all the time. And those veterans, the young veterans that have recently returned, uh, we're seeing more and more issues uh, with them because they have uh, been deployed on multiple occasions and uh, the the things that they see, they've seen and done are just, it's, it's uh, pretty traumatic. And it's difficult for them to get through uh, without the assistance of our agencies and, and, a, and a lot of counseling. And it's, uh, it's something that's going to be going on for years. Thank you again. Our next speaker is Ms. Lori Gum. Uh, Ms. Gum is from Stonewall Columbus. And I actually learned about the services that Stonewall Columbus is providing our veterans during the council budget hearing. Right. Um, Ms. Gum, will you outline what services Stonewall provides to our veterans for our guests and viewing audience? I sure will. Uh, thank you, Council Member Paley, uh, Council Member Page. Um, and I do want to thank the City of Columbus for your generous support um, of our um, Stonewall Columbus LGBT Veterans Program um, support program. Really, uh, what we do is threefold. Um, we have three different prongs of this uh, program. First First of all, uh, was a formation of our LGBT veteran support group. In uh, 2013, we started a collaboration with the Vet Center uh, in the Short North um, who were willing to work with us uh, to sort of provide the expertise. But we were finding that uh, a lot of our LGBT veterans uh, were really caught between two worlds. Uh, they hadn't been, obviously, um, accepted very much at the VA and sort of those sponsored groups. Um, that's changing very much now, but we're talking about years of disorder honorable discharges and um, before the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And we were also finding younger veterans uh, coming home that still wanted to go to a support group and be authentic, to not have to worry about being judged, to talk about uh, their partnerships and their families and their marriages. Uh, so we found a real need for that. So we um, uh, collaborated with the Vet Center who provided us with a, a qualified a veteran counselor who had combat experience, had been in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. So we were really having peers counsel peers. So the first uh, part of it is the support group uh, that meets uh, twice a month at Stonewall Columbus, and again, creating a safe space uh, where veterans can find other peers and share those uh, shared experiences with those peers. Um, the second uh, sort of prong of this uh, program is we have a veterans discharge review um, program now. Uh, 114,000 veterans were discharged dishonorably between the World War II and when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed. Uh, these dishonorable discharges had devastating effects on many of our veterans. Um, and so what we have started to do is take veterans and go through the review pro the discharge review process for them and with them uh, to get these reviewed. Now, right now it is not official VA policy um, that those will be overturned um, or, or looked at um, and overturned. Um, we are fighting for that twofold. Number one, for the veteran uh, herself or himself to get these discharges uh, um, um, repealed, basically, or changed. And secondly is we want them to know how urgent this is. Um, we have older vets uh, that are still trying to get this done. C could I beg your, I, I, I want to tell you a story real quick that maybe, maybe really emphasizes why this is so important. And another peripheral benefit of this um, veterans program is that we, we create a safe space where 
veterans can tell their stories. I had an 82-year-old veteran come in to me about two and a half months ago asking for help with the discharge uh, review. Uh, he had been discharged dishonorably in 1953 after a year and a half of service um, and was dishonorably discharged. He came in, he brought his dog tags, he brought his pictures of, of him in his Army uh, uniform, he brought pictures of him with his Army buddies, and we ended up sitting and talking for two and a half hours. And finally, when we got around to doing his, uh, his SF-180, it's a request for military records, that's how we start the review process, he turned to me and he said, do you know that besides my daughter, I've never told anyone else that I was even in the military? It feels good to tell my story. So it's a place where people can feel that their stories are honored and cherished and recognized. Uh, just last week, uh, Congress introduced the Restore Honor to the Service Members Act, uh, which is very important. That would demand that any dishonorable discharges for homosexual behavior or accusations that resulted in discharges be um, um, be reviewed. So that's a very important uh, part of legislation that we're sending to our senators um, and our representatives to know how critical this is, especially for our older vets. Um, they're getting older, um, and it's time to set you know the record straight before they pass on. Um, and we need to do this. And so we've begun this um, at Stonewall, and it's been very fruitful for so, for so many peripheral peripheral ways. Uh, the third thing that we're doing is um, every November we are designating that LGBT vet. Awareness Month. Last year we awarded um, recognition uh, plaques basically to four of our LGBT veterans and we had a ceremony and a reception. Um, it's really a month-long attempt to share with our own community um, what our veterans have done and share with the greater world how important it is um, to honor our LGBT vets. And um, there's a long history of this. As I say, we have a great relationship now with the VA who has an LGBT liaison, uh, which has been fantastic work. That's made all the difference for us and our vets um, to really feel comfortable going into the VA. So um, we've been with this program about a year and a half, and we've seen it's been very fruitful, and we look forward to, again, letting more people know that we actually do this um, and sharing the information. So uh, you can go to stonewallcolumbus.org. Um, under programs, you will see our veteran support program, um, and you can reach us through info on that, or my name is Lori Gum. Um, I'm clearly uh, listed uh, on on that uh, website for this and many programs, uh, but it's lgum at Columbus, stonewallcolumbus.org. So many ways to get a hold of us, uh, and there's also a direct veterans line uh, that I talk, just that I, that's sort of private and discreet, uh, and uh, only I hear that information. So, And for those people, which I'm sure are few and far between, where is Stonewall located? Stonewall is located at 4th Avenue and High Street, 1160 North High. So we're right here uh, in the short north, and we're right on the bus line. So we're very easy to get uh, to and from. Thank you. Councilmember Page. Thank you, Chair Paley. And I have two questions. Sure. Um, is the Vet Center separate from Stonewall. Yes, okay. the Vet Center is actually part of the larger Veterans Administration, so that's actually run, but it's on a much, a much, much smaller scale. Um, and part of the theory was that it would be less intimidating for mm -hmm. veterans, uh, specifically more marginalized veterans or traumatized veterans. Uh, so it's uh, right across from the North Market, so it's just down the street. So it only made sense for us to um, combine our efforts. But again, they can enable resources directly to the VA. Um, that help us greatly, um, and they have uh, additional trauma counseling, things like that, uh, that we can bridge our vets over there to have. So um, it's been a very important collaboration with us, as is now our relationship uh, with the larger VA that's just, just been fantastic. This year for our Vets Recognition Dinner, we are working now to get that uh, recognition dinner at the VA facilities. We think it would be very symbolic of the sea of change and, and the sort of welcoming now uh, that the VA does to our LGBT. Veterans, so looking forward to that. And also, uh, how many uh, veterans are taking part of your services? Uh, right now, we have about 21 in different uh, areas. Um, we're also starting to work a lot more with our transgender uh, veterans. Uh, that's a very uh, there's a lot of 
issues with that. And again, uh, the military looking like it now will open up service to transgender individuals, uh, but um, also working with them. And so we're seeing an influx really over the last six months or so uh, with transgender um, uh, veterans who uh, did not necessarily um, publicly identify as transgender uh, before, uh, but coming to work with us too. So we think, again, that's very important to have this safe space uh, where someone feels like they can come and be their authentic selves and we can channel them into those services they need. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you at our hearing and we appreciate you taking your time to come down and tell us about your services. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Our next speaker is Mr. Carl Higginbotham. Mr. Higginbotham is from the Columbus VA Ambulatory Care Center. On my tour of the center, I learned about the great work and care going on at this facility. Mr. Higginbotham, please tell our guests and viewing audience what services are provided at the center. Sure. Uh, Council Member Page, Council Member Paley, thank you for having us here today because we think it's so important to create awareness about VA services that are out there. Um, I represent the Columbus VA Ambulatory Care Center, which is located on 420 North James Road uh, near the Columbus Airport. Uh, we also serve 13 counties in and around central Ohio. So we work very closely with folks like Franklin County Veteran Services Commission and each of the county services commissions in each of those 13 counties to create awareness about VA. Our, our main objective here today and in all our outreach is to create awareness of our services because we think it's important that veterans utilize the services that they have earned through their military service. It's critical that they, there are so many services available to veterans and it just hurts me when we're out there doing outreach that veterans aren't aware of these services. So thank you for the opportunity to come here today and really uh, create that awareness. At the Columbus VA Ambulatory Care Center, our mission um, stems from uh, going back to President uh, Lincoln's second inaugural address, which is to care for those who bore in the battle. And we do that in a number of ways. Um, at Columbus VA, we provide primary care, behavioral health, specialty care, um, dental, optometry, um, just a, a, a number of services that are out there for veterans for complete health care coverage. Um, at the Columbus VA, we also have a Veterans Benefits Administration Office, which provides information on um, any kind of disability claims that a veteran may have, home loan, GI bills, runs the gamut. So within the VA structure, we have the Veterans Health Administration, which I represent, Veterans Benefits Administration, which handles the GI Bill, the home loans, any kind of compensatory claims, and then National Cemetery Administration. Um, veterans are afforded a number of burial benefits, and that's handled through the National Cemetery Administration. So we, some of the people that spoke here earlier today, Stonewall, uh, Franklin County Veterans Service Commissions, we really want to partner with those organizations to create that awareness. And we are always on the lookout for organizations who serve veterans in a number of ways. And so we want to partner with those organizations to continue to collaborate and create that awareness. I really appreciate you coming down here today. Can you tell me, um, and I know you get stats of how many veterans are in your area and how many of them are actually utilizing the services of your organization. That, that's a great point because it is, um, when I talk about when we're doing those outreach events and the amount of people who aren't aware of VA and the services that we offer. In Franklin County, we're reaching about a third of the veterans in Franklin County, and the numbers just get worse as we go into the outlying counties that we serve. Uh, Franklin County by far is the, the one we reach the most, but like I said, there are 12 other counties that we serve that um, are not getting the word about the, the services that are out there. So uh, right now, and it goes from like Franklin County, Delaware County is about the same, about a third, um, and it goes down to like 20% and down to like 15, 14% some of the outlying counties. I hate to put you on the spot, but sure. I have a couple questions. No, absolutely. When, um, when a veteran is discharged, don't they tell them what services that they're entitled to? Yeah, I mean, that, I'm a little lost. Yeah, no, that's unfortunate. I mean, they do that. There is a process for that, a transition that happens when you leave military service. But unfortunately, I'm a person who served in the military also. People don't hear that message. They're just looking to get out and get 
on with their lives. You know, there, there's a whole, it was like a three-day process to transition from military service back to civilian. And you're hearing a number of lectures and, and seminars about that transition, but it's, it's in one ear out the other. And the message is being given to them, they're just not hearing it. And because, again, like I said, they're just looking to make that transition and get back to their families and, and civilian life. So it's happening. We're trying to do more and more of that. There are a lot of our National Guard here in Central Ohio and Reserve Troops. We work with them. We call these, these yellow ribbon campaigns where we go into the units and we are talking to them and their families. So it works really well with the, locally with the National Guard and Reserve Units, but the, the national military, um, the active duty military, um, it happens, but it's not just not being heard. Well, and I and I know that's true. I mean, I know my father served in the military in the 1960s, and I when I got on this committee and started seeing some of the um, benefits, I actually called him, and he was unaware. And he actually, so and I've lived out right by your where your facility is for most of my life, and didn't even know it existed. So. Um, that's the purpose of this hearing, and if there's anything that we can do or anybody in this room can do to help you get the word out so that we can support our veterans, we'd be happy to do that. And in turn, also their family members. We, we find it very beneficial to get the message to family members of those who served in the military, your spouses, your, your sons, your daughters. Of, if they hear this message, please encourage that service member, that person who served in the military, to come in. We really encourage people to come into our facility at 420 North James and talk to someone. They can have a face-to-face -face meeting with an enrollment coordinator and be enrolled in VA healthcare that same day. So we really encourage, you can go online, you can call a toll-free number, but we really encourage people to come in and talk to someone, see our facility. Our facility is new, it's modern. We want people to kind of just have that face-to-face -face conversation and, and hear about those services and those benefits. Well, I, and I agree because I know I'm an attorney and I think I'm kind of smart, but when I walked into your facility, I was a little bit overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it does, it, because, you know, I ask a lot of questions like, what, how, what do you qualify for? Because you don't qualify for everything and there's all kinds of, little test that you, you know, so you do have people there that will sit down and tell each veteran what they qualify for, what they don't qualify for, how to get the services that they're entitled to. And I think that's so important for people to know if you feel lost in that whole process, and I know I would if I got online and tried to do it, and it may be an age gap issue, I don't know, but it's probably much easier to actually sit down face to face with somebody and have them help you coordinate what you're entitled to. It's as simple as bringing your DD-214, which is your discharge paper. All military members know what that is. You bring it in and they can tell at that point what you may, not, may or may not be eligible for. So um, that, that's the best way to do it. And also talking to uh, our, the service commissioners, the Franklin County Service Commissioners can also take a look at that. Thank you, Mr. Higginbotham. I appreciate you coming down here and spending your time. My goal is um, when I have took over this committee this year, it just seemed to me that it was really confusing for me and a lot of the people that I was speaking to didn't know especially the more local issues. I mean, most people know about the VA clinic in Franklin County, but they didn't know about some of the smaller um, organizations that are there supporting our veterans. And I just want to make sure that everybody has the information that they need um, and that we're all collaborating with each other because I, I, I really like collaborations. I think that works out better. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Um, we do have several additional speakers. Um, which is making me extremely happy because I've been at council for quite some time and I've had many of these hearings and very never do I have extra speakers. So I want to applaud the people that are coming down here. Um, it's, it's awesome. So um, when I call your name, could you please come to the podium and state your name and the services that you provide or the questions that you may have? Um, Bernard, and I know I'm going to butcher this name, Pontonis, Pontonis, Project Welcome Home Troops. Thank you, Council Member. That was a good effort. Um, yeah, uh, people stumble over Pontonis very much. It's Spanish. Um, Project Welcome Home Troops is a new uh, player, I guess, in the Central Ohio area. And uh, your own representative, Marcus Lovejoy, is going to be, Marquise Lovejoy, excuse me. Uh, we'll be attending that 
uh, program in August, I believe, August 20 through 24. It's a five-day workshop, three hours on a Thursday and a Friday, four hours on a Saturday and Sunday, and then finally a three-hour session on a Monday evening. Um, not all that difficult to do, um, not all that trying, but very effective in grounding an individual, um, making that person more mindful of their current circumstances and their present feelings. So the whole idea in the Power Breath Workshop is to at least get them to center on themselves instead of being scattered by all of the different areas, the, all of the different services, all of the different um, opportunities that exist for veterans within the community. So if you can at least have a sense of your own wellness, then you'll have a better opportunity, a better chance of um, remembering the services that are available through like the Veterans Service Commission or with the VA and handling the overwhelming sense that comes from going into such a large agency. If you can keep this portable tool with you, it'll keep you or help you to not be so overwhelmed. Say the name of the workshop again, because I don't know that people heard you, because I had a hard time hearing you. Ah, it's Project Welcome Home Troops. So P W H. So if you go online, it's pwht.org. Um, the individual that introduced this project to me at the end of last month in June uh, lives in uh, Boise, Idaho, in Treasure County. Um, the valley right there is called Treasure Valley, but um, she had called and requested that I stop and at least give a plug on that project. It's it's a meditation program, and from what I understand, because I had a conversation with um, the founder, um, and the meditation program is, is dedicated, and correct me if I'm wrong, towards victims of post-traumatic stress disorder, and also has some great, and according to the literature that I read about it, has had some really great results in not only post-traumatic stress disorder, but in medical disorders that are caused by stress, such, such as Crohn's, digestive disorders, migraines. Um, and the program, from what I understand, is funded by Panera Bread in Ohio. Um, and nationally, it's funded by other organizations like Microsoft. I can't remember the other ones. But, it, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's, you said it, something about breathing. Power breathing. Power breathing. So it's a meditation workshop about power breathing that um, deals specifically, it's 100% it's, it's free because it's funded by Panera Bread. The first um, seminar is going to be in Delaware County, unfortunately, for my Franklin County friends. Um, but I've been assured that they're going to move it, I think, either to the county or to the VA clinic. She told me that they were discussing that. Um, so we're excited to get it back into Franklin County. But if you find the need to want to do it, and give me the dates again. August 20 through 24. Um, then it will be in Delaware County. But I do believe, believe it will be come, coming to Franklin County. I did read the literature. Obviously, we couldn't bring and I can't remember her name from I Leslie Moore. Leslie Moore from Iowa to come here to speak to us today, although she will be at the workshop in Delaware, yeah. I understand. Um, but I was so engaged by the literature that I was provided that I kind of went out of my way to make sure that somebody was here to discuss it so that our viewing audience could see that it was available and that it was free. Um, for our veterans. And so thank you so much for taking your time to come down and talk about the program. Um, I, it's these kind of collaborations that I think can be very helpful to our community. Thank you. Our next speaker is somebody quite familiar to the county, Mr. James Castor.
Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, really thank you, Councilman uh, Paley. You've put together one of the best services, and um, this uh, information you put out, know your benefits, is fantastic. I wish everybody, every veteran would read this. They would understand better on what their benefits are. And um, I'd like to say um, John Warwick's and some of the county service officers that have worked for him are the best. Doreen Lafferty, who represents me, has done an excellent job, and she works for John. And I got to say, uh, I've been all around the state, and Franklin County has been doing a fantastic job. And I can't, uh, uh, the VA hospital out here, Carl Higginbottom and um, Keith Sullivan, they've, that hospital is number one in the United States. So. Let me correct you real quick, because I don't want to take credit for this. This book, which is Know Your Benefits, is provided by Mr. Higginbotham, I believe, and is available at the VA clinic. So I was confused by it. He was very gracious to provide me with the book, and so I asked him for a box of them that I could spread around the community, and I've been carrying them to my community um, meetings, but it is um, very... Um, helpful and thank you for providing those to our committee. Thank you very much. And I'd also, uh, my name is Jim Castor and I work for the Franklin County Recorder's Office and I'm a combat Vietnam veteran. I served in the uh, Tet Defense in Vietnam in 1967 and 1968 and when I came home it was completely different than it is today. People like you have gone out there and really done a fantastic job. We did not have this type of uh, services that you're giving out here in the county and uh, throughout the city. So thank you again. And um, the Franklin Recorder's Office, Terry Brown, came out with a veteran's ID card. And this ID card, um, I'll show you a picture of it if you can get a pretty good look at it. You have probably know more about it than uh, a lot of the people do. We offer that card um, for people who don't have a dollar. We offer it for free, and the DAV will pay the dollar if a lot of people uh, uh, decide that they don't want to pay the dollar. So the Disabled American Veterans, my Chapter 3, will pay for that. But what it is, we've, so many people come in, and they um, say they can't find Grandpa's DD-214, and a DD-214 is the Veterans Discharge Papers that um, he's able to get benefits with, and he's able to... Um, when he passes away, they have burial benefits, but you must have that DD-14 on file with the recorder's office or have your original. Well, I lost my original 35 years ago at the fair because we didn't have any type of a card. All we had was a, our original paperwork. So now um, the county recorder come out with something a little different and 33 counties have copied us. So it's really a good thing on helping veterans get their ID recorded, and um, you can do that from, uh, we're open from uh, eight o'clock in the morning till five at 373 South High Street on the 18th floor down in uh, Columbus on High Street. And I'd like to say that um, we're going on almost 9,000 cards. That's been fantastic. We've had nothing but a great comments on uh, doing the card. Now the second thing I'd like to mention is the Disabled American Veterans. Um, our adjutant couldn't be here today. He really wanted to come and talk about the benefits the DAV has to offer. And his name is Ken, Ken Markham, and he's the new adjutant. And um, he would like to have you come to our next um, council, when that, our next meeting, and uh, explain some of the benefits the city has to offer to some of our uh, members. Um, I'm the uh, ex-commander of Chapter 3, which is the largest chapter, Disabled American Veterans in Ohio, and uh, we're growing. We just, um, uh, we filed disability claims just for different veterans, and we just did the one millionth claim for a VA veteran. We're pretty proud of that. And we're in all the counties and uh, the United States, and the only thing I can say is that uh, um, I was kind of taken back. You've done a fantastic job. You filled some big shoes when you took um, Herschel Craig's place, and we're pretty proud of you. Thank you very much. I got a couple questions for you, Mr. Castor. Yes. Once um, a veteran files their form with the recorder's office, if they lose their card, can they just come back and get another one since you already have the, the form? 
yes, they can. Once they're registered there, they're registered for life. And we get so many of the veterans coming up. Um, uh, they have to have the original DD-214. It has to be original because there's so many copies out there today that uh, uh, a lot of the companies are accepting our card because they know they're legit. Well, I appreciate that. And then the other thing I kind of want to throw in there for those veterans that haven't gotten the cards, it's sure a lot easier to go to those restaurants and the fair and other places that are providing discounts and, and fun things for veterans when you got that card in your wallet instead of forgetting your forms at home. So I encourage the veterans for a buck to go get their ID card and take advantage of some of our great organizations and businesses that are providing discounts to our veterans. I just have one last thing. I definitely want to mention my chapter a little more, chapter three. Um, I'd like to say that we have a number of scooters and wheelchairs, and when a veteran does fall through the cracks and he's not eligible, uh, all we ask is if uh, they are a veteran and that uh, they give the wheelchair and the uh, scooter back when they're finished with it, the way they received it. And... Um, at this time, we have uh, six motorized scooters, and we have a number of wheelchairs. We're willing to uh, help any veteran out there or their widow. So, Thank you so much, Mr. Kasser, for putting that in, because that's important. And you can be found at the Franklin County Recorder's Office. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. I am really excited about our next speaker, because I just found out about this yesterday. Um, Kay Dixon from the Franklin County Animal Care and Control. I understand you have a veterans program. Yes, thank you, thank you for, for inviting me. Thank you for having me. For the month of July, we're offering any animal in our facility for the cost of $18 to any veteran. These dogs include spay, neutering, microchipping. They've had a behavior on a medical assessment. Also, they come with their license, both rabies and uh, medical license. They have a dental if it's needed. We also offer free training three nights a week at the shelter for the lifetime of the dog. If they have any other dogs at home, they're welcome to bring them as well. So that's what our program is. We know how beneficial it is, the human-animal bond, and how it helps relieve stress. And Do you only have dogs? We only have dogs. Okay. For the cat lovers and me. Okay, um, and where can they um, obtain these dogs? We're located at 4340 Tamarack. It's right off of Morse Road in Columbus. And we're open seven days a week, 11 to 7, Monday through Friday, and from 9 to 5, Saturday and Sundays. So not only are you going to give veterans a new friend, but we're going to save some animals too, aren't we? Absolutely. We appreciate all that you're doing um, to protect the animals in the county. Uh, it's important to me and a lot of my constituents, so thank you for what you do every day, but especially thank you for providing this service to our veterans. When I found out about this yesterday, I wanted to make sure that we got you here so that our viewing public could hear and hopefully come down and get their dogs. I know that my aide, Marquise, is very interested in visiting you. <laughs> so yeah. We also have a uh, food pantry for anybody that can't afford food. We don't want them to turn their dog in or lose their dog because of that, and we do offer assistance um, in that area as well. <clears throat> That's really important because I know that when we've had natural disasters, people are most concerned about their animals and, and sometimes feed them before they feed themselves. So <clears throat> Thank you for bringing that up because it's important that people know that they can come get food for their dog if they can't afford it right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming down here and spending your time to tell my viewing public about the service that you're providing. Thank you. Next, we have Amy Davey from the Brickman Group. Thank you very much for allowing me to come up here and speak this evening. Um, my name is Amy Davey. I am a area recruiter for the Brickman Group. Um, we are a uh, local landscaping firm here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and I wanted to come tonight. I found out about this um, actually through Marquise and um, wanted to come and just 
let the public know that our company nationwide, our vision and our focus um, has really switched to um, trying to help support the veteran community and hire veterans within our own communities. Um, we have plenty of career opportunities, um, training, advancement. Um, we're looking to really move some of the veterans within our community into management roles um, within our company. Um, so I, I wanted to just come this evening and make sure that we highlighted that and, and reach out to our veterans and learn about, you know, additionally other services that maybe we're not as engaged in um, within the community and um, definitely start to network with those, those individuals as well. Hey, if we have a veteran that's interested in a position with your company, where would they go? They would go to brickmangroup.com forward slash careers um, and fill out an online application. Um, and there are um, areas to note whether or not they are a veteran. Um, and they can also contact me directly. Um, my cell number is 614-264-5210. Um, and they're more than welcome to give me a call and I can definitely um, work, help move them through the process um, of applying as well. Thank you so much for providing us with that information and for coming down and caring about our veterans. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have a visitor who visits us quite often in county in council chambers, Miss Deborah Diggs. Thanks for coming and visiting us. I saw you last night. Good evening, tremendous Tuesday. Thank you, Councilman Paley, Councilman, Councilwoman Page, and those that are here. I am so happy. Last night, when I heard you announce that you were doing this tonight, I wanted to come back down and get the information. I work for Lutheran Social Services of Central Ohio. I'm the Ohio Benefit Bank Director. And the Benefit Bank is a web-based program that helps people apply for benefits. And so um, veterans is not my forte, and so um, I wanted to get information, so you see me have my grandchildren going collecting cards. Um, the free pet food, oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Because um, a lot of our veterans, are, and a lot of people are giving up their pets, their loved ones, because of the cost. It's hard enough to try to take care of yourself, and, um, and we all know how important pets are to people. So I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this information. I agree with the gentleman about you picking up the baton with the veteran services now that Mr. Craig has left, but we cannot let it drop because we have veterans going back since the conception of the United States and they'll continue on because uh, we know freedom is not free. Someone has to do it and having a veteran, having them in my family, I do salute you and Councilwoman Page for taking your time and your aids for being here this evening. And I want to, um, if I haven't gotten your information, I want to get everyone's information that's here today and definitely some of the booklets because I had one and someone took mine. <laughs> but definitely, I'm so happy about all this. Thank you so much and appreciate all that you do. Thank you, ladies. Ms. Diggs, take a couple of them back to the benefits bank for you. They're sitting right over there. And I, I knew, I'm sitting here looking at Ms. Cog Mr. Cogley going, where is your speaker slip? And I dug through and found it. I'm sorry, I skipped over you. Mr. Cogley, from the Primus Project, could you come forward? Thank you. Councilwoman Paley, thank you. And Councilwoman Page, good to see you again. My name is Gary Cogley. I'm with an organization here in Columbus, a veterans advocacy organization called Ohio Veterans Incorporated. And it was formerly known as Vietnam Veterans of Ohio, and we've been uh, operating the free store, and uh, uh, we've gotten involved with a number of uh, mentoring programs for veterans. But we've touched upon a, uh, what appears to be a recurring theme here in the veterans community, and, and uh, uh, Councilwoman Paley, you're very uh, aware of the issue that uh, veterans are dealing with here. Now, we talked about how many veterans are there here in Central Ohio. And, uh, of course, uh, John, your estimate was 80,000. Uh, some people have estimated 60,000. Uh, some people have estimated upwards of 100,000 here in Central Ohio. So we have a very sizable veterans community here. And, unfortunately, uh, we have... Uh, uh, just a, a huge number of resources available for the veteran community here, but they're scattered everywhere. There's no central clearinghouse for this information, 
and for veterans coming into the community, recently discharged military personnel coming into the community, of course we have, uh, Carl's already left, I've been involved with the, or enrolled in the VA healthcare system for over 30 years. I've had great success with this clinic. Uh, I can't say anything but good about that. And uh, John, I've had the opportunity to uh, uh, have some of uh, my people interface with your organization, and it's been really outstanding. But we, we have an issue within the veteran community, and, and uh, uh, the issue is called PTSD. Now, I uh, was in the Army from 1968 through 1975. I served with a little unit called the 82nd Airborne Division as an infantry officer, and I was fortunate in that I didn't go to Vietnam. But one of the things that I'm really keyed into as far as the PTD, or PTSD issue and suicide prevention said, I had a twin brother who served with the 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam and was seriously wounded at a battle called Hamburger Hill. And that battle occurred in 1969. In 1960, or I'm sorry, in 1992, over 20 years later, he committed suicide. And so we're very aware and we recognize the fact that PTSD uh, does not go away. It doesn't have an expiration date. And uh, unfortunately, we're still having Vietnam veterans commit suicide. And we recognize now that we have uh, soldiers uh, coming out of Iraq, coming out of Afghanistan, that this will be an issue for 40 or 50 more years. And so we're, we're very concerned and we recognize, and, and my colleague Bernie Pontonis and I have talked about the fact that here in Central Ohio, we have great resources. But they're hard to find, and, and for veterans coming into the community uh, who are already stressed, this becomes a difficult issue for them. And, and the fact is, in talking with Carl Higginbotham from the VA, he's indicated that 40% of veterans never avail themselves of the, veterans, uh, the VA itself. And so how many veterans are falling through cracks? And, and we hear figures, even from the VA, that 22 veterans a day are committing suicide. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but uh, I, I know too many people that have committed suicide, and we're starting to see that becoming a greater epidemic among women veterans. And uh, so our mission, we've recognized for, for five years that we need a resource here in Central Ohio, a comprehensive veterans resource center where uh, veterans can come into and, and uh, have access to a lot of the social services that they need. And of course, uh, uh, being provided with information regarding the, the Veterans Clinic here and the uh, Franklin County Veterans Service Commission. But there is not that central location. We have the, uh, the uh, Vet Center. We have the uh, Military Resource Center. They're all over the place. And so uh, we started a project, and we call it the Primus Project, to acquire a large-scale facility here in Central Ohio that we can bring in a lot of these support services for our veterans and have a central location where a veteran can come into and have the information provided and have uh, a lot of these uh, PTSD resources available and domestic issues available and, and homelessness issues uh, addressed. And uh, so our mission is, with the Primus Project, is to acquire and we've identified a particular building, uh, the Indianola Middle School building, which, which is owned by the Columbus School District. It's been vacant for five years. They had an ill-conceived plan in 2011 to expand the building. That plan uh, failed, and we cannot identify that there are any plans for that building. And it's a large building, and we recognize that this would be an ideal location for a Veterans Resource Center. So we've started putting the plan together. I've got information to provide to you uh, after the meeting here. But that's uh, our, uh, our purpose. I appreciate you coming down. We have met before. Yes, we have. Good luck on your project. Um, and I want to thank all of our speakers here for what they're doing for the veterans and for our community. You know, I, and I want to, I have one more project that isn't here, but I do want to give him note, and that's um, Judge Ted Barrows. And he has, um, is the judge in charge of the Veterans Court with Franklin County Municipal Court. I don't know if you all are aware, but Franklin County is one of the only, I think it is the only, I might be wrong, but I think it is the only city in the country that has five special entity dockets, which now includes our new Veterans Court. <laughs> this court 
is being helped by a lot of the organizations that were here today as speakers, um, but it does help with all kinds of services. And in the end, if you make it through the program, which I believe is uh, pretty two years long, as long as well as all their all our other specialty entity dockets, they will expunge the record that brought you into the court. So. Um, I want to make that, if you are interested in the Veterans Court, call Franklin County Municipal Court and ask for Ted Barrows' office, and he will be able to judge Barrows to help you facilitate that. I just want to say that, you know, people who talk about the city of Columbus, we do not have um, an ocean, and we don't have mountains, but what we do have is our people, and that's why Columbus is about us. So I, I celebrate that every day, and I especially celebrate it today. I'm going to close this hearing by reminding the public that they can also watch this hearing again on CTV. For any additional comments or questions, you can email my legislative aide, Nancy Pryor Solly, at N P S U L L Y at columbus.gov. I want to thank you again to all of our speakers and guests, and I want to thank the city council staff, Jeffrey Carter behind me, Nancy Pryor Solly, and my newest member of Team Paley, Marquise Lovejoy, as well as our legislative an analyst, Emerald Hernandez, is in on the back, who works with me on all my veterans' issues. I want to thank you all for your hard work you did to make this public hearing happen, as well as CTV. They're always great to work with me um, and to make this broadcast available um, so that other people can hear what's, what is available. If there is nothing else, I will adjourn this meeting and wish everybody a nice evening, unless Councilmember Page has something to add. Okay. Thank you.